Hi everyone and uh, welcome to another edition of the Bread for Soul Convos. This is the 98th episode that we've done with 21 and uh, I'm so stoked to be hosting the gents from Deep Town Josie and um, I mean mainly because they've been such a, a prominent force if I may put it that way when, when it comes to events in the underground scene specifically you know and we need these kind of events I think without events really the the scene isn't there and to have people who are doing it so consistently so regularly as well i i can assume it's not the easiest thing to do but yet they bring such a dope event to the city every second week of the month in johannesburg and uh, i have to welcome uh carlo and matt welcome to the show gents what's up thanks guys what's up what's up matt good to be there cool, thanks bro. for having us no, thank you. The pleasure is all mine, bro. Um, uh, I think, like, firstly, like, before we even get uh, further into into Deep Town, I want to ask you guys about Metro Ticket. Let me start with you, uh, Matt. Um, where did you guys meet? How did this thing start for you guys? So, uh, it was a whole back in school, because me and Carl obviously went to school together, and we obviously just formed, you know, like a, a love for the type of music that we both enjoy playing now, and that's where it obviously started back then. So it's been around for quite a while. Um, obviously, we don't play as much anymore now because there's not as many gigs. But yeah, we still love to do it. Yeah, yeah. And I have to ask you then, Carlo. Like when you guys are DJs first and, and then become promoters, um, is there ever a need for 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 some kind of balance? Do you ever? Because you, you guys don't always play on your events, or or do you always do? Like, um, how does it work for you guys? When do you decide? Okay, now we need to go on. <laughs> well, look, let me actually take it back to the school days where Matt uh, mentioned we started playing together. When we wanted to kind of get out onto the club scene and, and all those places, it was very difficult to get bookings because there's so many DJs. So we figured let's create a platform for ourselves and we'll book ourselves. So in the, in the beginning, it's, we played every week uh, at a residence or as residents at uh, Tokyo Star and Greenside. And that was for a good three, four years. And uh, we created a platform for the people we wanted to book us to see what we were doing. So that's where the DJing and promoting kind of correlation comes in. Um, now, as the years have passed and as we've gotten older and as myself and Matt have other uh, interests and careers and businesses, uh, we've, I wouldn't say taken a step back from the DJing. It's just that the, the level of quality is so high out there that most of the guys are better than us. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we try to play maybe every three months at Deep Town Jersey. Um, people must also remember that we have a, two distinct sounds that we play. We also play techno, so um, we kind of bounce between the two scenes, you know. Mm. Um, w one weekend we can be playing in Soweto, the next weekend um, at, at Modula in Cape Town, you know, or Toy Toy. Mm. So it's very much a, a, a huge passion for both of us, but obviously as uh, uh, promoters, um, we, we, we want to take it a lot more prof professionally than we were a few years ago, you know, mm. so that requires a lot of time and money and all those things. So it's, it's a balance of the two. Yeah. Yeah. And we will talk a bit about, um, the money, you know, because for me, um, doing this show is, has always been really about how can somebody looking up to guys like you, um, start their own thing and actually make it work you know like looking into different aspects of the good and the bad like the 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 more difficult stuff to achieve you know the the things to really look out for because i think um it's not it's not it's not as, as easy thing as sometimes people assume that it is promoting an event and to do it on a regular basis i can just imagine the, the kind of effort that goes into that yeah. and we'll get into some of those things but i want to ask you matt man because you guys work as a team but like firstly there's there's two of you guys as as the main guys for deep town how would you explain your different roles um that you play uh, both of you in the 
in in the whole deep town um team yeah so it's uh, it's been quite easy i mean carlo has been quite involved obviously with bars for a very long time so that's kind of what he will obviously take preference with um the setting up of the venue we both do it together our deal with the online ticketing um and then obviously the booking of the lineups is something that we do together so we, we do have our own individual like parts that we deal with for the event but as a whole i think we we kind of just you know we're so used to doing it now because we've been doing it for so many years that it's just it's a natural thing it just happens we each just go into our separate ways and just obviously get it all set up and ready yeah i want to just get into that still with you Matt, ne? because you guys have been friends for some time and you're working together for some time as well do you ever get to a point where there's a need to call each other out if if one part is lacking on 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 the one thing men you were meant to do the fucking tables and you're not doing the tables like <laughs> do you get to that point I mean, or, or where somebody's dropping the ball and you have to kind of pull each other it's not not often i mean it does happen every now and again um if if we if we're running late it's more than definitely does sometimes happen but if we're on time it's we just just like overlook it and just carry on setting up the rest of the stuff and get it done at a later stage yeah yeah but not really no i get it like i i think also it's a thing that um maybe because there's two of you guys and, and there's a level of understanding within the team um sometimes i find that the more you have more people involved um the lesser the, the more it can get chaotic easily you know like um it can get um very difficult to manage somebody who's meant to be doing something and they're not doing it but if it's like the both of you guys i've got a friend of mine um we've done events in mafiken okay. together and it was like that kind of thing that you know if if i'm messing up the guy will will call me up man you you dropping the ball you should be doing this one two three and and we kind of move quickly like that you know um I want to get to this thing Carlo because uh, uh Matt touched on it a bit and with regards to ticketing and um just yeah the ticketing aspect of of the event um have you guys had a ticketing issue that that really messed you guys up No uh as Matt said Matt is part of the Howler team um or so he said he does the ticketing for us and he's actually part of Howler which everyone knows is one of the biggest ticketing platforms in in this day and age um i i see them as the biggest competition to someone like compu ticket you know who isn't really keeping up with the trends of uh of the digital age mm. uh where as hala has embraced that um to a t you know mm. constantly evolving constantly new uh technologies so i uh, i uh, on Matt's behalf I can say we've never had a single ticket issue. Wow. Um yeah, ticketing I mean it helps to have um someone like Matt running that for us, you know, because he's his own client almost. Yeah. Um so we're very fortunate, you know, with me having my bar company, uh these are massive resources available to us yeah. which help bring the budget down and uh increase the ticket sales if you know what i mean yeah because you know Matt is is managing huge accounts like ultra and bushfire mm. and massive events like this and and these guys are utilizing the latest marketing technologies uh search engine optimization etc you know so Matt helps us with that knowledge that he's got from Hala yeah uh the same way i help with my bar knowledge from running bars for lots of these events yeah yeah so it's it's very much of a powerful synergy where 1 plus 1 equals 3 because together we create something much yeah. greater that beyond us individually you know yeah um yeah. and it's funny it's the same as as the music as with metro ticket the two of us have very different styles actually but when we play together we create this new genre of wonky house slash techno you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh so you know we've we've got a very strong partnership um you're right in saying that two people um you know sometimes there's too many cooks in the kitchen mm. <laughs> and guys are just pointing fingers or whatever mm. but we we able to to raise an issue um 
just calmly discuss it. And by discussing an issue, we always get to the best decision mm. because we will question each other. What about this? Oh, you forgot about this. And so no decision is taken lightly. Mm. It's, it's a lot of, lot of back and forth conversation, you know, whether it's ticketing, uh, bars, uh, the stock list, whatever the case may be. Yeah. yeah. And just because you're mentioning Buzz, I, I want to do ask you about because you you host the event in 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 different venues. Sometimes it's like a venue like Barbecue Rooftop, you know, which is a, an already yes. running venue. Um, and sometimes you take it to the tennis club, which doesn't really open regularly. Um, do do the does the deal differ um, in that sense in terms of yes. what you guys yes. get at the bar and stuff? Yes, so there's there's two types of hires. There's a dry hire where you rent the venue, you rent the shell. Mm. So you pay a flat fee, which is generally a lot higher because not many people are just going to hand out their venue. Mm. And then you ha have the right to run the bar and take all the takings. Mm. But it's not as easy as it sounds because at the same time you run all the risk. Mm. You know, if you're paying 30,000 Rand for a venue hire, which is more or less what a small venue for 500 people costs, you might have to get a liquor license, which is another 3,000. You know, next, your bill's 100,000 Rand. Yeah. It's a, a lot of money you need to take in from the event, you know. Yeah. So there's a risk there because if it's a flop, if it rains, etc., you stand to lose tens of thousands of Rands. Yeah. The other scenario is... Um, is a profit share with venue owners because these venue owners have bars running so we can't just come in and clean out their bar and now do our own thing you know uh so that requires a lot more discussion um, and structuring a profit share from the bar uh, but i can tell you it's a, it's a lot more difficult for us because now we've got to work with other people's ideas and opinions and you know, it's, it's it's difficult because me and Matt have our vision and our way of doing things. Mm. So we try to actually stay away from the profit shares. Um, and our model is to hire a venue and run the bar and run the full production, speakers, tents, furniture, mm. everything from scratch. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to get a, a bit into marketing um, with you, Matt. Um, Man, like your event, uh, I don't know if you've ever, I mean, you guys will tell me if you've ever really had an empty, empty event, but like your event yeah. seems to be well supported, you know, like um, I want to get into marketing. How do you guys market Deep Town Josie? Like if you guys could let us know, uh, I, I want the source. <laughs> so that's probably the hardest part of the whole model. Um, it takes up the most time. So we actually, we, we, we've got a, a company called New Age Explorer who obviously take full control of this for us. Um, so they've got a team on their side who deals with obviously the, the uh, boosting and, and publishing of, of, of all the different content. They reply to people on social media. Um, so yeah, it's very rarely that we get involved in it, but we obviously do, at the end of the day, have a final say on what we want to go out, when we want it to go out um you know so this is something that, that like when i said we obviously have our different things that we we branch into this is one of them that obviously carla takes quite a big lead on um so yeah i mean if you've got anything else you want to add, add in, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's quite a challenging yeah so it's actually two parts so matt's described the first part which is a professional company which is costs a bit of money as well as the ad budget on google and, and facebook uh, then there's the designer as well, um, and we use uh, a very good designer, his name's Marcus, he's got a, a company called uh, Marcus Wolf Design, and he's spending hours, hours illustrating these drawings of the DJs and the look and feel, um, and you know, the long story short is you need to spend a bit of money to get those results. You know, we all try to do social media ourselves because we can. You know, maybe we've got a little bit of Photoshop skills and copywriting skills, but we all know when it comes to executing it every day across all your different pages, your personal page, your business, your mom's cake shop, whatever, you, you can't keep up because 
you know, copywriting alone takes 30 minutes for a post up to an hour. Thank you. Um, so it's, I think what's important to note, it's not just me and Matt doing all of this. You know, we've built a team below us that we manage and supervise. Uh, and as Matt says, we've been doing this for so many years now, you know, Deep Town for close to 10 and Deep Town Jawsy close to four. And because of the consistency of Jaws, a deep town Jawsy every month, it's very difficult for us to make the same mistake twice, you know? Mm -hmm. So we always, you know, what we start planning the next deep town Jawsy a week before the upcoming one. Mm -hmm. So on Monday, we're ready to launch the new flyer. Not Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Guys are still hungover by then. <laughs> Tuesday, Wednesday, the, the, the flyer is ready and out. Now, to make that happen, there's a lot of preparation. You need to confirm the lineup, confirm the fees with the DJs, speak to the designer two weeks before so he knows who the headliner is so he can start illustrating it. Um, and then coordinating with the social media team to have the posts out on time. You know, we can't put the event out a week or 10 days before the next event because it's not enough time to reach the amount of people that we, we, we need to, you know? Mm. So it's a lot of organization prepar preparation. And uh, I would just say school fees, you know, we've, mm. as we, we learn from a mistake, it goes onto a checklist of all the previous mistakes. You know, if we run out of ice or something, you know, we make sure that never happens again. We, we increase the levels of ice on the order, you know? Yeah. Um, with the design, sometimes we've been late in confirming the DJs. So the artwork is ready to go, go. but the DJs aren't confirmed, you know, mm -hmm. so we can't put the, the artwork out. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of planning and, and, and um, organization, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. and uh, with the help of a team, the social media guys and the designer, it's a very important to have a, 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 an aesthetic that's uh, pleasing to people's eyes every time they see the posts, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I must say the level of design generally is very good um, out there, but we've tried to take it a, an, another level with the actual illustrator who's hand drawing uh, the, uh, the artists opposed to a Photoshop collage of palm trees and speakers, etc. Yeah. which is also fine, but you know, we've got our look and feel and that's, that's how we want it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I like that about Deep Town as well. Like any, any, actually anything that's built and has some quality imaging towards it, you know, like, like it supports the, 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 move, the movement. It's, it, it makes yeah. it more professional. But also something that you mentioned with regards to a team, I feel that it's such an, an uh, we cannot um, state it enough, um, just building a team. I've been to events where the promoter is like, is the maybe the closing dj you know like for the yeah. for his event he's collecting all the cash you know he's doing all yes. the marketing he needs to be paying all the djs and all of that and it becomes very yeah. chaotic you know like to manage um because he's most, answering the phone while he's playing dude you know <laughs> what i mean like guys is at the gate man i need to come in you know stuff like that yes. I, I, yeah. I, and i, I want to get into before i get into djs matt I, because um carlo mentioned making mistakes and learning from mistakes would, would you remember like one or two even if it's one really mistake that you know was yeah really worth worth not repeating something that could have terribly went wrong um when it comes to eventing or specifically with the town jersey so i mean it's i don't know if it's a if it's a if it's a curse or what it is but we we don't always have the best luck with the best weather at our events um so the one the, the last event which yeah could have gone horribly wrong was when when we had um black loops and we checked the weather apps and we made a call not to get a tent um and with our luck it just changed and it started to rain and rain hectically Shit. and thank goodness we had gazebos well no gazebos but we had umbrellas to try and cover the sound we had to obviously turn the sound off for about an hour and a half and just pray that it, it was obviously going to clear but yeah in that state that's just from experience like uh, we just shot out we went and got gazebos um just in case it happens again you know but yeah. thank goodness it didn't and it obviously turned out to be a good event yeah yeah but yeah there, there's there's <laughs> I, a lot I, of i, I want to follow up on, on what matt has said because i've learned something from him 
so bigger mistakes we've made and I'll take responsibility is in the past we've had events where the ticket sales haven't been very good and we can see on the Thursday we've got torrential rain downpouring the, the whole day you know and you know as a promoter you always hope that it's going to clear up and maybe people come to buy tickets at the door and there's times where Matt has said, I think we should rather postpone this or cancel it because the damage is going to be more from trying to do the event than maybe paying some cancellation fees to the DJs and refunding people. Mm. And it's a pride and ego thing, you know, it's always like, let's try, let's try. Mm. And that's, that's a lesson I've learned is in, when there's, the, the odds are against you, don't try to do the event rather take a step back and actually move it to another weekend even if there is a bit of a backlash you're going to get some complaints but it's better than putting on a 200 grand production or whatever the case and 50 to 100 people arrived you know yeah i have to ask so matt, matt the, about that because then when when would you like when would you think is the right time to take such a decision like is it five days before or is it like three days like when would it be like a good time to be like you know what this is not gonna work out let's can this so i mean <clears throat> one thing that we that we enjoy about using tennis club is that if if it is going really bad and you know we need to make that call we can always go downstairs and go indoor um it's not it's not our first preference but we have obviously done that in situations where it's like there's no point in trying to beat the weather because you're not going to beat it so let's just take bite the bullet, go downstairs. Some people aren't happy about it, but you know, for the event as a whole, it's a better decision to obviously move it downstairs. Mm. People are warm, they're cold. Mm. But yeah, yeah. I'd, no, I'd, say, I'd say first prize is to have a plan B, like what we've done now is have a venue that caters for that worst case scenario. Mm. It it varies. You've got to use your discretion, but I would say not less than two. Three three days so people... yeah 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 i, I, I think <laughs> by the time he finishes this sentence yeah we'll be we'll be yeah, far. Anyway. Only one way <laughs> <laughs> yeah no carlo we'll wait for him to for his internet to really sort itself out but let me ask you Matt, bro like when it comes to djs right um there's a lot of DJs, obviously, in our scene. Um, yeah. Uh, and a lot of good DJs, you know, for that matter. Where, yeah. like, w how do you guys decide then um, that, okay, this is the lineup that we, we need to be going for? Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's based, like, we, there's a lot of DJs that we, you know, have full trust in um, and that like they deliver a great set every single time that they play and it's people that the crowd obviously want to see um so we so you know you know we, we obviously like to bring in new up-and-coming djs either to open or close just to try and give them a platform and hopefully you know like they really do take off and we can bring them on board for more sets um you know like judy j is a perfect example of that like she's you know she like blew us away the first time she played there at, at rooftop barbecue and we yeah, ever since that day, we were like, we need to get her on board because, you know, there is, there's something big that's about to happen with this girl. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, we, like I said, we've got our personal preferences. Um, it's the guys that, that de deliver time and time again. And it's what the fans want to see as well, you know. I mean, we they do give us a lot of help sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got some guys who, if they do see the new up and coming DJs in Soweto or, or wherever else, they do send the names through and we do take it into heart and we do obviously consider booking them, of which we do. You know, normally book the new guys who a lot of people haven't heard before. Yeah, yeah, and and that's what I like about the the, the event. You know, like is that as much as you would have a Vinny Da Vinci on the lineup, but on the same lineup you will have a Judy J and you'll have somebody yeah. completely unknown to to the masses. You know, yeah. but like giving that opportunity to to many different um, DJs. I feel like it also adds, you know, a lot of color to the event. It's not only like no. a about having a, a star-studded lineup where popular DJs only, you know. Also, 
because there's a lot of DJs in 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 our scene, a lot of good ones. Sometimes I feel events you 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 feel like events keep on recycling the same kind of uh, DJs, you know. But I, I want to ask you, um, still with you, um, welcome back, Carlo. <laughs> still with you, Matt. Hi. How, how do you then? Do you ever get uh, that it needs to be a strong balance between having um, a headliner, having someone people know and like, and then having unknown people? Is it ever? Is there ever anything conflicting when it when you look at? Um, okay, we need a strong lineup to get more people. Is it always the case, rather with Deep Town, that when you have the strong lineups, um, automatically that means uh, you've got a, a bigger attendance? Well, I mean, lineup definitely plays a big part in whether you're you're gonna you know get the most people to your event or not. But we 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 strive to have the best lineup we can every single event that we obviously host. Um, so it's not it's not quite hard for us to to decide obviously who we want to book. Um, we do have we do have our regular uh, residents that play regularly, um, and then obviously we like to have a headliner as well as you know up and coming DJs just, just to support the rest of them. Yeah, yeah. And Carlo, like uh, I saw this year already during lockdown, I was like, hey, these guys are very serious because at the beginning of lockdown, you were already announcing uh, resident DJs, you know, um, with Bouche and Cat La Cat, who are obviously like you know one of some of the dope djs that we have in our scene and uh, recently you've just announced judy j2 um what what does this actually mean when it comes to resident djs um the one especially specifically the ones that you've announced is it meaning does it mean that they're going to be playing every deep town gig or like if you guys uh, could explain um you Carlo. okay cool I just, to follow on what matt was saying and um, the lineup compromises of a formula that we've figured out which is basically the headliner followed by two maybe two three uh, sub headliners then the residents in the middle and then two three uh, slots for up and coming uh, DJs and um, so now the residents fit into the the middle there as I said and the idea of why we added more uh, is so we can increase the rotation of the residents um, and you see we're also looking at slightly lowering the hours of the event uh, because 2 till 2 a.m. is a bit long-winded so we, we're thinking 2 to 12 maybe 2 to 11 you know we will see how lockdown um, unfolds um, but the point is we want residents to actually be the core of the lineup uh, and then the guests complement the res or the residents complement the guests. So just some more of a regular rotation. Uh, guys won't be playing every every month, but there will be at least two three residents um, on the lineup. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, Matt, uh, while you, while you you were trying to connect uh, to reconnect, Carlo did mention uh, Judy J. You know we was. Um, you know recently especially late last year and, uh, and most of this year has been really getting a lot of traction you know she's she's getting popular and popular you know she's a good dj obviously um but i want to know like uh, bringing somebody like her who's fairly like new you know like a new artist um as a resident to to such a uh, an event like deep town what does that do like for you guys or how, what was the discussion really uh, between um, between the, the both of you guys to bring her on? You know, like uh, if for me, if you look at some of the comments on, on the posts, uh, you see comments like fresh blood, uh, new blood, the, uh, the youth, you know. So we figured it was time to give a resident spot to a young and upcoming DJ opposed to other guys who have worked years to get to that point you know um and you know she just ticks all the boxes the music the mixing the curation um her popularity obviously is is, a, is helps a lot because she's we reaching a, a lot more people now and mm. um, you know to be recognized by the president is no small feat mm. uh th that was what got me to call matt i said you know the president's just spoken about this girl and uh, 
it's you know not even about that it's her music and and her her actual her, her level of skill warrants her to be a, a resident a resident yeah um I, I feel very strongly about creating more lineups uh with female representation mm. because as you know deep house is heavily male dominated mm. in the dj aspect and the attendee aspect you know mm, mm. uh so the whole thing about um equality is just bringing the two sides closer together you know so mm. now we've got 10 guys and one girl on the lineup mm. we want seven guys and three girls you know so we can eventually get to a 50 50 mix mm. which is a true representation of people in the country mm. Mm. so just the, the timing and just a whole bunch of factors made it a no-brainer to us to to add her to the list yeah 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 super i love that so much man and one thing another thing that i like about her is that um just the attitude you know the the, the willingness to know that you are you are new but also be willing to learn for me it's it's, it's something that even the old some of the older people who've, who've been doing it for for some time have missed that like that giving yourself that will that okay I'm going to learn, you know, and, and treat yourself like a new artist almost all the time. I see Bootlet doing it, even though she's been playing for such a long time, but she's always willing to try and learn new things, you know. And for me, that's like one really good, one of the good aspects of um, a good DJ or a good artist. And while we're talking about Judy J, I've got a, I've got a voice note from her. I'm going to play it and then and then we'll carry on with the conversation. Mm -hmm. This is Judy, but I'm known as Judy J. I'm a DJ and a producer. I started following the event Deep Town Jersey back in 2017 when I started DJing. Only got to attend it last year, uh, 2019. Fortunate enough, I got a residency this year, which is quite exciting. Deep Town Jersey it is one of the events which one wouldn't want to miss, especially if you are into electronic music. Um, as a youngster in the industry who is learning things on a regular basis, I feel that uh, my experience and the love and support I've always received from those who I've surrounded myself with have helped uh, Juriji grow so much in such a short space of time. I am truly blessed and honored to have been recognized by the Deep Town Juicy founder. Having played there twice, both, uh, both experiences were breathtaking. As such, uh, I am really looking forward to sharing my love for music with the patrons. I promise not to let you guys down, and I will do my best to bring a dynamic experience. And most importantly, I will have fun while doing so. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Super, super. I love that so much. And and man, mm -hmm. I have to ask you this, man, like, because this is so, uh, w one guy asked me the same question, like, how do these guys, because when I, when I posted that I'm hosting you guys uh, uh, today, he sent me an email saying, please, I, I need to know how to get on as, a, as an up and coming DJs, DJ. How do you guys like find the new ones and, and actually decide that, okay, we're going to give this, this person a chance what informs that in and i'm assuming that you are getting a hundred thousand uh, requests uh, almost all the time you know from from new djs who want to be playing um on deep town how do you guys decide who to put on so uh, from my side i'd like to give thanks to uh mcd and cha <laughs> and cabo mcquena who are true deep house patriots and uh, warriors you know they run the c7 gang and uh, formed a very close relationship with guys like that as well as many other people i can't name all of them and um it's people like this who have become um advisors to me in many ways you know i get a lot of recommendations from those guys um, because they much more connected into the scene and they will send us links, they will send us mixes, and obviously we listen to them, and then we've, we've got a short list where we've got hundreds of names. Um, and obviously the better, the higher up the list you are. 
so I mean that's I, I, I'm proud to share that little secret because those guys uh, have really helped us a lot over the years then there's obviously the just random coincidences you know uh, during lockdown I started um, renting out CDJs just to keep going and uh, I, I also started renting out studio space for people to come and just record their mixes now these guys don't know that I'm from D town or whatever and uh, I'm in my room sitting and I'm listening to these guys and they actually unbelievable unknown DJs you know guys with not even one mutual friend on my Facebook because I would always go vet people to see that they are right and I'm thinking to myself shit there's guys out there that no one even knows about you know so I, I will hear someone like that and say shit this guy deserves an opportunity you know so it's it's very difficult because the, of the limited amount of slots on the lineup this is that this is exactly the reason why me and Matt don't play every week because there's so much talent out there we've had our heyday in our 20s you know enjoying clubs and festivals let's give the youngsters an opportunity because 99 out of 100 times they're going to deliver you know mm, yeah. and so yeah it's, it's just keeping an ear out you know often you see guys talking on facebook about someone you know whenever i see that i instantly go and, and, and hunt them out <laughs> yeah, yeah. and so look we're very lucky there's no shortage of, of djs out there mm. with our formula of the known the the, re, the headliners taking up the, the two slots mm. the residents and only two or three slots left for the talent out there mm. the job is easy you know we've got lineups done for the next six months <laughs> yeah. because we can we have we do one and then we've got to start in the next one mm. So now with COVID, we've got lineups for the next 12 months. Yeah, yeah, because we, we, <laughs> you know, we are waiting for such a long time, right? Yeah, we had lineups ready before. Mm. You know, as I said, after Black Loops, on Tuesday, we would have gone live with the next lineup. Mm. But obviously, Cyril spoke and that changed the, the, whole, uh, the, whole, the whole game. Yeah, yeah. And um, Matt, something that uh, someone like is asking on, on my Facebook, uh, Udi really, he's saying that, how do you guys come up with the idea of doing the event uh, almost kind of mid-month, you know, because the second Saturday of, of the month is not always like that month end, you know, like sometimes it's kind of like 14th, you know, it's, it's almost really mid-month. Um, why do you guys yeah. decide on the second Saturday of the month? Well, I mean, from my experience of doing this for, you know, close to 12 years now, there's, we, we don't see the point in fighting over getting people to your event on the first and last weekend of the month because that's the most common weekend for people to do events because it's, you know, it's when people are flush with cash. Mm. So we, we, we've just chosen, let's go try and go in the middle. It's, it's known by everyone. It's in the middle of the month. We don't have to compete with too many other events. Um, yes, it's not obviously the most ideal time, but it's, it's worked for us and you know, it's just something that we're going to stick to so that we don't have to worry about, you know, going on the same day as, as Spring Fiesta, for example. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. it's just something that or, we've just... Or, or Casper's Full Up the Dome or Black Coffee's Africa Rising, you know. These big events are consistently on, on the first and last Saturday of the month. Mm. We're naturally going to lose some patrons to those events, you know. Mm. So by moving a weekend afterwards, People still have money, you know. Um, I, I I take pride in our the the quality of our customers. Lots of all young professionals, guys have money to spend, you know. Mm. And uh, that way, we avoid clashing with ninety percent of the events out there. I always like to say, let the pawns go out first, and then yeah. we'll do the next Saturday. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. And Matt, tell me, bro. Like, um, I want to ask you about money, right? Because as much as this is a passion as much as like it's something that you guys do um so passionately and it's a good thing for the scene but is it a sustainable thing uh to be doing every month i could like in your view so i'll be br brutally honest yeah without having sponsors it's 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 not possible it really doesn't make it uh, it, it like and i'll have I advice it. if people want to actually go and do this this type of stuff you're taking a very big risk if you're going to do it without sponsors because you know yes you can have some good events but you can have some which 
don't go to plan at all and you'll you end up losing a lot of money which we, we we've we've experienced that a couple of times so yeah. with having the sponsors it makes it a lot easier to do it um and yeah it's good and bad days you got to it's just the game yeah and and before before i i, I asked uh carlo about the, the sponsors that that you guys sometimes usually work with let me ask you because you mentioned like losing money what's the biggest amount of money you guys have lost in one event <laughs> uh look I, i'm v- very proud to say we haven't lost anything over like forty thousand rand fifty thousand rand between the two of us uh, and i'm proud to say that because there's horror stories out there of guys losing two million rand or mm. four million rand on on, on one night mm. you know i've seen it firsthand with my bar company i run the bar the events a huge flop and uh you know me and matt have uh, we we always say that we learn school fees from other people mm. you know when you see other people learning lessons you should take that lesson you know and and, and it's exactly like i said about postponing an event uh, if, if it needs to be done you know mm. so we've made that call a few times and saved our, ourselves a lot of money and um, because when you add up all the expenses at the end of the day it's it's a, it's a hell of a budget mm. you know beat time there's no less than a hundred thousand rand every month now, if you, we can do a quick calculation, 300 people, let's say 400 people, we average at about 400, at 100 bucks a ticket is 40,000 Rand, right? Now, 400 people is a hell of a lot of people. That's a good party. Yeah. But we still got 60,000 Rand to make, mm. you know? So the bar maybe makes that amount more or less. Mm. So on 400 people, you're just breaking even, you know? Mm. So with the sponsors then make it profitable mm. but it's it's not profitable if, if if you working for free if you know what i mean yeah yeah so yeah. you know and a lot of people always ask us about the sponsors and they ask for their numbers and stuff like that and you know the answer is simple it's the proposal you got to work on a proposal which is brief it's good looking so you can imagine our flyers our proposals look like the flyers with good imagery. Oh, that was the other thing I wanted to mention. The, the third part of the marketing is the photography from the event. Mm. We, we always use nice lifestyle images. Now those images go in the proposal. It's not a, a 10 page text document talking about your love of music. Mm. You know, they want to know about the volumes you're moving, the, the, the type of people you're expecting, and you know the meetings to the sponsors are out there just go into linkedin and type red bull or yeah. or whatever and you will get their contacts mm. but it's the proposal that's the key because a lot of guys just send an email or they send a whatsapp you know no one's going to take you seriously on the proposal you should list your uh, what you are able to offer in terms of a return on investment mm. you know we we only have our sponsors because we're selling huge volumes of their stock and mm. um, we sell close to 100 cases of corona um or flying fish or soul or whoever the beer sponsor is you know mm. for 400 people that's a good roi for the sponsor you know mm. they're actually not spending money because we are paying them the money for them to pay us back you know mm. Because we could go with another beer if if uh, they didn't want to sponsor us. Mm, mm. So it's the proposal and you know the the contacts. As I say, you can go Google, or you can phone up these companies and say, "Can I have this person's number?" And many corporates out there have actual sponsorship submission forms on their website, like Nando's, like Outsurance, and so. It's, it's just the work that you put in, you know, mm. uh, the, the proposal I did, I worked like weeks because I wanted to do, save money by not, because you, you've got to employ a designer now to, to lay this thing out. And you obviously you were trying to save money and it's, it took weeks to get it to the level that we, we wanted it. And that's the, the, the foot in the door, mm. you know, no one's just going to arrange a meeting with Joe Soap. The moment they see a proposal that speaks to them and it's well crafted and, and nice to look at mm. you've got the meeting mm. and then the meetings for us generally go well because we've got the history of deep town mm. so it's very hard for a sponsor to say sorry this is not for us 
what do you mean we're selling all the stock you know we're giving yeah. you free marketing your logos over here so we, we kind of set our, ourselves a, a head above the rest. I feel a lot of brands don't offer the sponsors actual value for what they're getting paid for. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and the thing that you mentioned with regards to photos, I think it's such an important thing. You know, um, guys, invest in a photographer, you know, just as much as you'd invest in a good lineup. Because all of that, at the end of the day, after the event, you've got like really good proof um, of what went down you know and 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 even better yeah. if you are doing the by yourself and and you are able to show the volumes that you you are able to move because sponsors that they are really about are we gonna sell volumes are we gonna sell you know uh, our items there or is it just us putting money I- into a black hole yeah. it doesn't really work like that um yeah. what um one thing that um you mentioned carlo but i want to ask matt about it like this thing of ladies at deep house events not having enough ladies does that have has that bothered you guys i mean it does definitely sometimes get to me it doesn't like really bother us it is something that we that we are trying to work on to to obviously get those numbers up um and you know one of the things that carla mentioned is obviously maybe reducing the hours of the events to make it more of a come have lunch type event, you know, instead of just having lunch somewhere else and coming afterwards and then just partying till late. So we are obviously trying to do certain things that we're working on with sponsors to to try and, you know, increase the interest for for, for the ladies. Um, but it's not something that really bothers us. It's something that we are trying to obviously just work on to to, to get it to like a, a level that we that we're happy with and, equal level you know mm. can, I, can yeah. I tell you why it's not a problem it's because not one person there is there to look for ladies mm. every single person that comes to a deep house party comes for the music so you know something i'm also very proud about in in four years that we've been doing deep town Jersey, we haven't had one fight we haven't had one uh, uh situation where a woman was approached uh unnecessarily and you know we, we have two bounces three bounces we never have any issues there and it's for me that's the important part is the mm. people are coming for the music mm. you know if you look at hip-hop parties and a lot of other scenes guys are going for the women and that's not my kind of party obviously it's nice to look at some ladies you know and that's what matt is saying we're working on that so we just, you know, cut more welcome cocktails and maybe more seating mm. um, because ultimately we do want an equal representation of, of every type of color, sexuality, mm. gender, um, equally mixed at the event, you know. Mm. So uh, I open this invite to ladies out there, please come to Deep Town yeah. and, and know that you will be safe there. and. Um, you know, it's actually ironic because a deep house party is one of the safest spaces for women, but they don't go there, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, ladies, please, I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> what what, what I, I have to say, though, also is that um, when I say like it, uh, it does get to me sometimes, it's like um, not in a in a bad way, you know, like I, I obviously feel like whoever wants to come in and enjoy the music needs to come and enjoy the music you know if i see like a 10 90 percent guys attending the event i'm not suddenly feeling otherwise but i must say that uh, also guys need to stop complaining about not seeing ladies at the event when they themselves are not bringing their girlfriends you know i go yeah, exactly. i go to 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 all of my gigs <laughs> with my girlfriend you know I, i've got no yeah. no issues with that she enjoys the music then the problem is, I think, needs to be how do we get Deep House DJs' girlfriends to enjoy Deep House? I think you know. <laughs> then we then we can sort this thing out. Uh, just in closing, <laughs> I, I, I want to ask you guys: uh, Do you guys know? Because uh, there are some regulars. Whenever I go to Deep Town, there's some people. I'm like, this guy is always here. You know, like this guy is always attending. You've got those people who like religiously support the movement. Um, like how do you guys work it i'm sure like there's also already like some kind of relationships now that you guys built with these uh, regular followers of the event 
I think the key word there is relationships. Is over the years since day one when we met Mavutu and Busle and these are the the regulars you're talking about. From day one when we met them, we formed a relationship with them and we instantly became friends with these guys. And it's, it's the ongoing maintenance of these relationships that has allowed us to have this posse of people that. You know, arrive there at week, month in, month out, without fail, with a kettle or whatever the case. And uh, you know, it's the, beyond the relationship; it's the friendships. And you know, what used to annoy me growing up and aspiring and looking up to DJs is I would often go up to a hero of mine, and he would completely snub me, and uh, you know, have no time for me, never mind become a friend, he wouldn't even give me time, you know? Mm. And then I'd look at this guy and say, well, this guy's a puss, you know? And uh, my perception of him changed. So myself and Matt really, you know, enjoy being friends with every single person who comes to Deep Town. Mm. And I believe that's where the loyalty comes because they know they can come have a drink with us. Mm. They can advise us on the lineup, you know, they can, you know all the banter on the Monday when there's a guy who messed up a mix, you know. So <laughs> my my Facebook my Facebook has changed vastly in the last three years, you know, because I've made all these new friends. Yeah. So my timeline is just the deep house feed, obviously, uh, and then I just follow the comments both here and uh, Joburg and in Cape Town. Uh, I mean that's the thing is you built a loyalty with some of the Cape Town people even, you know they they flying up every now and then to come join us that we are our Sundays guys mm -hmm. and I feel it's because we took the time to get to know them and you know we so that's another thing I'm very proud about is the, the, the this, uh, bridge that we we formed uh, between Cape Town and Joburg mm -hmm. the, the two loyal crews have actually amalgamated mm -hmm. and these guys cross over to We House Sundays, Deep Town Jersey, they host each other you know, I, and as I say, my Facebook feed is now pictures of these guys at each other's cities going to each other's parties, you know. Mm, mm. And so, yeah, yeah man. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, it definitely does. It does. Um, Matt, uh, just in closing, I want to ask you this. Uh, I forgot to, to get to this question with regards to, you know, like you mentioned, We House Sundays, um, like, like Carlo mentioned, We House Sundays. And sometimes you'd see that you guys would share um, like a, a headline. I you know Jimster was here and he did their festival and he also played for, for Deep Town Josie. Um, with with that, that, how often does that happen, especially when it comes to international DJs? Because the expense is, is so much more, you know, like um, the cost is so much more to bring one guy to just come for Deep Town. Um, how often yeah. does it happen uh, that those collaborations? So, I mean, we 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 chat to the we are sundays guys on a regular basis um and obviously if they've got an international they're wanting to bring out they reach out to us and vice versa um yeah because like you said it is the cost to bring one of them out is it's enormous so for us to do it on our own it doesn't make sense at all so if they if they aren't available to obviously take an international and we can't find someone else the, the, the likelihood of us canceling international is is quite a common thing because it's mm -hmm. just the cost is way too high to obviously do it by ourselves. Yeah. So yeah, there are other guys that we do chat to if we are unavailable, but you know, because of the the link that we're forming with them, we we obviously do reach out to them first mm -hmm. um, for all of our internationals. We we're very lucky because we're very aligned with them, mm -hmm. um, and and their sound it's like ninety eight percent, ninety nine percent the same. Mm -hmm. So it's when Dave reaches out to us and vice versa we almost all the time agree on the artists that um, we are proposing you know because mm. it just makes sense yeah. so uh, we're very fortunate to have that um, because we wouldn't be able to do it by ourselves you know it would just be too much yeah. the dream would be to have a place in Durban a scene in Durban that was so strong enough to take a hosting mm. and uh, Pretoria as well should start booking uh, more DJs so mm. you know we we plan to we, we've we've chatted with Clement from Transmark Soul Sessions a few yes. times yeah and um, about sharing artists mm. 
Uh, we actually were getting the process going and then COVID came, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, the, the more we work together, the, the more we will achieve together. Mm. That's the simple uh, matter of the fact, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's such a dope thing, man. And I really hope to see that happening a lot more, not only just with your events, but like other guys who are doing a regular thing, you know? I think people need to get to a point where they uh, they, uh, they are open to collaboration, especially where it's not uh, uh, you're not sharing the same target market you know like if you're in cape town in Joburg, it's completely two different yeah. markets in terms if as much as the music is the same like you mentioned Devon and and pretoria too um I, I just wish that you know to see more more of that happening um in our scene but gents like i think uh, we can pack it here you, you guys shared so much information with regards to the event um, just in closing, I have to ask you this one last question. I keep saying this. One last question, Matt. Um, where is there like a bigger vision for Deep Town? Is there is there like a bigger thing that you guys want to do with with the with the event, or are you just taking it as time goes? I mean, we do have like goals that we want to achieve, but for now, I think you know it's it's a manageable event. Um, it speaks to the people, everyone enjoys it, um, it's working for us. I don't think there's any point in, you know, trying to expand it quicker than what is growing, because uh, then you end up lining yourself up for failure. So I think for now, we're pretty happy with the way it's going. Um, you know, we are obviously Quality going to do time. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we, you know, it's working for us. It's that, sometimes you know, it's, bigger is not better, you know. It's, yeah. Because yeah. people always want to grow and grow, and then you know it's so they let's say you add a second floor, or then you do a public holiday one, and mm. that's greed. You know, what's what we're doing now is working for us. Mm. So rather refine the model, and improve what we're doing now to the best that it can be, mm. then try and expand and go beyond our our uh, capabilities, mm. and then as matt says you set yourself up for failure because you get one of those days where it's hailing and you know you lose three hundred thousand rand at a party mm. you now can't do the next parties mm. so it's going to be very wise about expansion and and uh, overcapitalizing. yeah yeah no i totally get it i, I get it definitely guys i just want to say thank you firstly for 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 joining me you know on the show this morning and uh for sharing as well about about your your event your journey i really really have so much respect for for this movement of yours gents i i, and I wish you all the best no, thanks thank you. thank you to for, for doing this i mean i didn't realize it was 98 shows <laughs> but uh that's it's really amazing that you've done this and i'm sure you've shared a lot of light and and it's the best time to be doing this you know we can't be partying now so we should be planning now mm -hmm. we should be learning you know i'm sure uh through all your episodes it's guys can get a free degree in djing and throwing parties you know mm -hmm. so good on you and let's hope we're all behind the decks as soon as possible you know yeah yeah man i, I hope to get back on, on, on the lineup too because the first time i i had a chance to you know, uh, and I understand this because of the type of music that I play so most of the time. You know, I was playing kind of quite early, you know, like nice mood. But I really would like to come through eventually you're, at you're, some point. You're, you're, you're going like, to be back. I, I want my, <laughs> my, my, my picture to be drawn too at some point, you know. Like yeah, in yeah, the future. exactly. <laughs> All right, Jess. No, thank you. Thank you Thanks, so much. Brother. Hey, tada. Thanks so much. Thanks to everyone for watching. Short, short, short. And, and, and to everyone who's watching, thank you so much for watching this um please tag somebody in the comment section who might learn from from the show from the the, the episode and uh, share the video so more people can see it otherwise let's remember to stay creative peace, peace guys.